Six years later, in 1991, there was another Soviet television play, completely unrelated, this time based on Fellowship of the Ring. Yes, unrelated Hobbit and Lord of the Rings movies so close to each other isn't just for American animation studios. This is called Cranidaly, or Guardians of the Ring. This aired once on television in the final days of the Soviet Union, and it was thought to be lost until it was uncovered only last year. Which means that there might be other Tolkien adaptations out there that have yet to be uncovered. Boy. No, this video is going to be long enough as it is. I will get to those another time if they ever surface. According to the cast, this was shot in about nine hours spread out over the course of a week. That is a really quick time to shoot a Tolkien adaptation. But, you know... I appreciate the effort. It starts out with a lot of footage of black riders and hobbits and a giant foil ring while the ring's poem is put to music. It's abstract and probably confusing if you're unfamiliar with the story, but I kind of dig it. The sets and the locations don't quite mesh with each other, but nothing is as jarring as when it suddenly goes to blue screen. I'm not one to judge when it comes to bad keying, but some of these shots probably didn't need to be keyed. There is once again a narrator, played by the fourth McElroy brother here, but for most of the production, he doesn't really narrate. They just keep cutting back to his face for reasons I absolutely cannot fathom. He really loves that pipe, so he could still be Tolkien, just a young, sexy, hipster Tolkien. Tolk vel me na navstrechu tebe, my brother. Ah, my dear. Maybe it's just to remind the audience that this is all a story. I don't know, it's an interesting choice, but I'm going to take it to heart. I'm just going to keep cutting back to myself without making comments. Мы должны решить, кто отправится дальше в страну Чёрного властелина. Мордор. Нет, надо всё-таки их разбудить. Просыпайтесь, просыпайтесь. Бильба Торбинсу сегодня исполняется 111 лет, ведь хоббиты жили долго, и даже в свои 111 Бильба выглядит, наверное, на 50 не больше. Ведь когда в душе не живет жадность и злоба, тело долго остается молодым. Well, and when a magic ring unnaturally prolongs your life like butter stretched out over too much bread, but potato, potato. So we start with Bilbo's birthday party, as Bilbo has the greatest mutton chops I've ever seen. Yeah, my... Incidentally, this Bilbo is way more patient with Lobelia than most. Любелия, перестань думать только о содержании моего ля кошеля. I know you want me dead, you old bat. Now I am charmed by this. Великий маг и волшебник. Брат мой, 
Я знаю тебя сто лет, рад тебя видеть. Да. This is a much more accurate Gandalf than the one in Soviet Hobbit. He's got the silly playfulness, but he still has the solemn seriousness, and he does not seem to be laughing at anyone's misfortune. Да мне я не видал тебя. И вот тебе от меня. The lack of a budget is readily apparent with the outdoor shots that look like the snowboarding video your friend shot on a VHS camcorder in middle school, and the fireworks of Gandalfs, which are... You couldn't even just find stock footage of actual fireworks in the sky to cut to? Man, this makes Gua here in that Swedish version look great. <laughs> In the middle of Bilbo's party, Bilbo and Gandalf slip away for a private talk. You should probably tell the narrator about that. He thinks your prolonged life is all about your spirit staying free of greed and malice. Frodo, depending on the angle, looks either like Blackadder or like the lost Kevin McDonald character. The only one who looks more kids in the holly is Gollum. Why won't you let me forget that I have a cabbage for a head? I do I. И кое-что забыл оставить, Бильбо. Where have I seen that motion before? Так, и кольцо. Он на его мне оставил. Чего бы это? А впрочем, может пригодиться. Может пригодиться, а может и нет. Shadow of the Past is interesting because Gandalf is like good and solemn, and Frodo is clearly a whirlpool of attention deficit issues, switching from casually whittling to hiding under a pillow with no notable change in temperament. This is the wormiest Frodo I have ever seen in my life. Again, should probably tell the narrator that's what's going on. Stop lying to me, pal. Gandalf's like a tough guy shaking someone down for the Corleone family. I love it. Какие-то новые чудесные друзья, и они покажут, кому надо, где орки зимуют. Орки ужас какой, какие орки? Это враги хоббитов. Это узнаешь. If their entire role can be reduced to the enemy of your species, Frodo should probably know about them already, pal. Come on, Frodo, get a diagnosis already. So in this version, is this another shoehorned in prophecy, or is it just that only hobbits have the fortitude to withstand the ring's evil? We're never gonna know. Man, people were not kidding about George R. R. Martin drawing from Tolkien. I feel like the winter is coming thing is just to justify the fact that all the outdoor scenes 
had snow in them, but none of the on-set scenes had snow in them, so they make that part of the magic of Middle Earth. Okay, work with your limitations. And so the hobbits reenact the Camp I Me Love scenes from A Hard Day's Night. Just imagine the mashup yourself. I am not dealing with one of their copyright claims today. They encounter Farmer Maggot, who, despite being an innkeeper for some reason, is still a more faithful depiction of Farmer Maggot than Jackson gave us. that's right, Maggot. You stand up to that Nazgul. Hell yeah. You're better than both of Peter Jackson's farmer Maggots put together. I love this maggot. I want a whole series about him. But alas, we must move on to the old forest. Oh, yeah, we do a quick outdoor conspiracy on mask, which I'm happy to see, but Gandalf already said the other hobbits would be joining him on the whole journey, so it Seems kind of redundant. Yes, old man Willow bores the hobbits to sleep with an interpretive dance. Here comes Bombadil, and he seems like a pretty accurate depiction, except for one interesting detail. Okay, I know that the Russian translations of the book were heavily censored, so did they just not include the line about Bombadil being not quite as big as one of the big folk? It's like they swapped out his Hey Doll, Mary Doll with a fee fi fo fum Not only are the Bombadils unnecessarily giant, but Goldberry is the Emma Thompson version of Fraser's ex-wife? Well, I was gonna start by singing the Doodlebug song. I wonder who the Lori Metcalf version's gonna be. Ah. Uh, oh, man. Lucy! 
my glass. Yeah, apparently the Barrow White is played by Puddle's Pity Party. Сейчас, ребят, сейчас я вам помогу. Bombadil saves them from the Barrow Whites by shuffling things around below frame, and he sends them on their quest. Traktir garcuyushi pony. Держит лавр наркиз. So they get to the prancing pony, and Barlam and Butterbur appears to just be straight up Basil Fawlty. Good thing Bernard Cribbins wasn't a hobbit in this one. He wants to no, no. Oh. <laughs> Frodo here isn't necessarily trying to keep the low profile he should, and in fact he seems desperate to prove everything's fine, so he jumps up and joins in song rather than being pressured into it. <laughs> Also, the Brelander starts singing first, so I guess Hey Diddle Diddle isn't a Bilbo original here, it's just a song everybody knows. Makes as much sense as Jackson making it a dwarf standard. God, this poor Brie girl just dealing with wormy Frodo dancing up on her. But rather than just accidentally slip the ring on, Frodo just suddenly feels the pressure of everyone in the room staring at him, including Patchy the Pirate. So he deliberately disappears, which is a very different characterization for Frodo. <laughs> Barlaman gives the hobbits the note from Gandalf, and Frodo, oh so smoothly, puts Strider to the test. Such a wormy Frodo. So you know how I talked about last week how Jackson amped up the intensity when Frodo was stabbed at Weathertop? He's basically just on death's door between then and the flight to the Ford. Well, this version amps up the intensity even more between those points by combining them. <laughs> Yeah, Weathertop and the flight to the Ford are all like a single incident, and in terms of abridgment, that's an interesting adaptational choice. Frodo is stabbed at the Morgul Blade. He wakes up in the house of Elrond. I think that works as a condensation tool. So then we have the Council of Elrond, Boromir's there this time, and... He seems to be played by that old friend of Fraser's that John Cleese played. That's it, I've died and gone to hell. <laughs> Why are so many people in Middle-earth either John Cleese, someone from Cheers, or both? I'm sorry, is Legolas played by Lori Laughlin? Lori Laughlorian? Я побывал в замке Скальбург у белого мага Сарумана. Вот объединиться нам действительно надо. Это верно. Но объединиться за тем, чтобы кольцо всевластия стало нашим. Oh God, I'm glad this didn't resurface until well after the glory days of Tumblr. The world is not ready for fangirls of young, queer-coded Saruman. <laughs> Pretty cool that Saruman has the power to provide his own Instagram stickers. 
Why are you so suspicious, Frodo? This is Gandalf we're talking about. Мне помог сильнейший из горных орлов ветровой. Okay, choose your fighter, low budget Guahir edition. Друзья мои, какие будут предложения? Фродо! Фродо! Я предлагаю вернуться назад. Вернуться? Мы можем только с победой. Или, по-моему, с поражением. С позором! Или с позором? Ой, нет! Я предлагаю продвигаться вперед. Я тоже так думаю. That's what you were asking everyone? Do we keep going or go home? That's the big decision you needed help with? God, this fellowship is screwed, aren't they? As far as I found, this is the only filmed adaptation to include the warg attack by Karadras and... Oh my god, I love these Lunar New Year Parade wargs. I want five for my own. Then we get to Moria and, um... This is where the whole thing kind of just falls apart and gets confusing. I did not edit any of that. Good luck following along. Yep, no Balrog. Gandalf just fell and he can't get up. <laughs> I like the automatic assumption that because Gandalf fell out of sight, he must be dead. Aragorn might not exactly be a master of object permanence. Then we arrive in Lothlorien. It's not the same kind of sinister that Jackson made Lothlorien, but it's still kind of sketchy with these elves luring the fellowship into a creepy sleep. Вы хотите остановить зло? Это невозможно. Я предсказательница Галадриэль, и я говорю, зло непременно порождает зло. Фродо looks into the mirror of Галадриэль. Три в эту волшебную чашу, но не прикасайся к воде. Это я, черный властелин Саурон. Я слежу за вами. Отдай мне кольцо Фродо. Okay, that one had to be a comedic take on purpose, right? That was supposed to be funny. Just like, hey there, it's me, Sauron! Like, okay, I get that, you know, low-budget Eye of Sauron, that's how you're gonna do it, but him self-narrating, like, th that had to be played for laughs, right? In place of a Dark Lord, you would have the ancient boor from the Princess Bride. Никому не могу доверить кольцо. Прощай. Фродо, вернись. Верни. And then, almost right away, it's the breaking of the Fellowship. Frodo and Sam go off in their merry way. 
And as far as I know, this production team never went on to do the two towers. And that was Guardians of the Ring Russian Breakout, and it is really interesting. There are parts that look like a significant improvement over Soviet Hobbit just six years earlier, and then there are parts that look like a significant downgrade from Soviet Hobbit, but it's all just super fascinating seeing this slapdash stage production being filmed of Fellowship of the Ring. I kind of love parts of it, and then other parts are just really hard to watch. Not because, like, it's cringy, like, not because I don't like the earnestness, but just because it's literally difficult to watch. Like, the attempt to do special effects just looks so ugly to me. But there's a lot of other real charm in this movie, and yeah, it's, it's just fascinating. 